Hey, what's up guys? Rafal here from OPT and today we are in Landers, California. GMARS more specifically because we are going to be playing with a piece of equipment that we haven't tried on this channel just yet. And I keep saying we, but I'm the only one on the screen. So I want to introduce you guys to Diana. Hey guys. Diana is also part of the OPT team and she claims to be new to astrophotography, but if you see her work, it's like absolutely incredible. So she's lying, just don't <laughs> worry about it. This bag on her back is carrying the scope that we are going to be talking about. And the cool thing is that you have the option to purchase this bag with the scope so that way you can keep everything in one place and it makes it much easier to carry around. So without further ado, are you ready to set this up? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. This is the EV Scope. It's a fully automated astrophotography tool designed for creators who are interested in astrophotography, but a little intimidated by all the gear that goes into it. With this scope, beginners can appreciate its ease of use and its ability to guide you through the mysteries of the night sky without prior knowledge. You have the option of buying it with the carry case, which makes it incredibly easy to transport it from place to place. This scope is controlled through an app on your phone that lets you select all your targets to start imaging. And the best part about this scope is right here. Even though this scope is fully automated, you're still able to have that awesome moment of looking at your target through the viewfinder as it gathers data and develops the image. Collimating the scope is actually pretty easy, especially since it comes with a manual that gives you straightforward instructions on how to do it. Basically, you take this hex key and you screw these two screws right here until you get the collimation just right. And especially for someone like me who has never collimated a scope before, it took me about five minutes before I got it right. So once you have the scope collimated, the next thing is to get your focus right. And it's really easy to focus because built into the lens is a batten off mask. And all you have to do is pop this bad boy on and you're ready to start focusing. And with the batten off mask is really easy because all you have to do is look through your phone and then you wanna find a bright star in the sky. Once you do that, it's just like working any other batten off mask. You're gonna try to get the spikes lined up so that way you know that your image is in focus. So finally, after your scope is collimated and your focus is set, there's only one more thing to do. So before it can sue to your target, you're gonna go, you're gonna make sure you plate solve first. And you do that by going to the field detection button on the app. And then now it says field detection in progress. And it's field detection was successful. So now when I go back to my target, there. Now it says go to. So you just click the go to button. And there it goes. <gasps> oh my god. Looking through the viewfinder, it looks like you've taken two hours of integration time on the target. And it's there right now. And I only went to that target a minute ago. It's incredible. Oh my gosh. This would take hours, three, four, five hours of shooting on a regular DSLR or even just an Astro camera and then stacking it and then processing it. I mean, we're talking like over a day's work and I did this in two minutes. <laughs> You only do see the image, it's gonna show you, it's gonna say M27, Dumbbell Nebula, two minute exposure. It even has all the other details, 34 degrees north, 100, this is your location. I can just picture like a family or friends going out together and shooting this and then having that memory. So if I were to take my brother or my family and show them how great the universe is, seeing different targets, they're gonna have much more fun if I have this in this app and we can see it right away, we can all walk up to the eyepiece and look through it and see something that would take me a whole night of exposures, a whole night of processing, then to get the same image. So unfortunately we're shooting on a night where the moon is gonna be about 80% illuminated, but we decided to make an experiment out of it. The EV scope is really good at shooting on moonlit nights. So we're gonna pick three targets, shoot those targets before the moon comes up, and then we're gonna shoot them again after the moon comes up and see how the images look. The first target was the Dumbbell Nebula. This image was taken after four minutes. Here it is without moonlight, and here it is with moonlight. Oddly enough, the second image turned out slightly clearer. Our second target was the Eagle Nebula, and before the moon came up, we noticed some odd RGB artifacting around the image. After the moon came up, it clearly affected the imaging and made it more washed out. 
Our final target was M13, the Great Globular Cluster, and the first image came out very clear. The second image wasn't bad, but you can clearly see some moonlight spilling in from the side. Even under moonlit skies, this scope was able to capture incredible images in just four minutes, but we wanted to see what would happen if you let this scope track a target for even longer, so we had it stay on the Dumbbell Nebula for a little longer than four minutes. Here it is after four minutes, and here it is after nine minutes. Just look at the difference five minutes can make. Now, it didn't change much after nine minutes, but again, these are under moonlit skies, which means you don't have to be out in the middle of nowhere or under Bortle 4 skies to get incredible images. You can take this scope into suburban skies and still have something to show your family and friends. So right now the moon is right over there and we have this giant bright light that's gonna probably affect the images. I'm gonna turn off this light and we're gonna see how the EV scope is able to capture the moon. <gasps> oh my gosh. Maybe I was doing something. Oh my gosh. Okay, so when I was originally adjusting the gain and the exposure time, because originally the moon was overexposed, it was white. So I knew I needed to decrease the exposure time. And when I started lowering the exposure time since it was overexposed, the moon started be having more and more detail. Look at that detail. All right, cool. So final verdict, we had a good night of imaging with the EV scope. Diana, as an astrophotographer, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I think it's really cool for fun. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of astrophotography targets that you can get with it. You can't get them all, but the ones you do get are great quality. Um, I love its ease of use, its portability, and it's great for sharing astrophotography with others in groups, families, friends. I think it's, it's really fun. Yeah, totally. I think if you're curious about astrophotography, um, but not really pursuing it, I think this is an amazing tool because for me, like I was seeing the pillars of creation right in front of me for the first time and I got so giddy and excited. If you're thinking about pursuing astrophotography more seriously, then we would probably push you towards more advanced tools. But for getting introduced to astrophotography, this is an incredible product. So if you guys have any questions about the EV scope, feel free to give us a call or visit us at optcorp.com. We can answer any questions you have. And until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Clear skies. Clear skies.